Bum, bum. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Shitty Cowboys. Guys, it's been a while. Who remembers what happened during the last stream and wants to <laughs> recap where we are tonight? That's all you, Sensei. As I recall, we was... Uh... I don't recall. No. Uh, <laughs> so we went to um, what the hell? The Trough was the name of the town, which was a town populated by uh, hog folk. Uh, I can't remember what they was called, grunters or something grunters, like that. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So we went to go see them because there was a, on account of a fella called Slim Bill, who uh, we was told could tell us about the mysterious ghost cowboy and the strange events that have been happening around anyhow we found out that uh slim bill had been held under house arrest and had been something like a coup d'etat uh and he had uh, been deposed by a feller named uh durak not turak with the cerebral bar but durak who was a pig man and Durak did not want to let us speak to him, and he professed to know nothing about no ghost cowboys anyhow. So we did what we did best and asked around about stirring up a rebellion because we found out Durak wasn't too popular. Uh, my good friend Sean Marston decided he was going to be called Susan for the duration of this adventure. <laughs> Claim to be the inventor of the famous Susan stew. We use that to get into the good graces of the townsfolk. Um, the lady hog who ran the uh, saloon uh, said she fixes up with uh, some uh, help doing a rebellion. We went for a naked mud bath for several hours and came back. <laughs> she she made up some uh, sleepy time stew for the uh, guards at uh, Slim Bill's house. We hit up on the roof and did some parkour to get down again uh, when the guards were all knocked out. Got into Slim Bill's house, got him out. He agreed to help us out in exchange for being paid and taken out of the town. We said, okay, we got him in the coach, the uh, MS Paint, the color-changing fabulous coach. We thought we was getting off scot-free, and then we was getting chased by, I don't know, a number of uh, hogmen in wagons chasing us. Yes. I think that was about right. That was yep. uh, that was very, very good, yes. Um, so it's uh, Slim Bill inside the MS Paint. Um, you two... Do you the qu question I have: Do you guys ride um, like on the bench behind the ho the clockwork horses on the MS Paint, or do you guys usually ride in the wagon of the MS Paint? I reckon I ride up front. Yeah, I would think so. Okay, um, so yeah, uh, it's we ended right when you heard shots ringing out from behind you. Um, Durak just found out about fake beards. Found out that you two were actually. I mean, that Slim Bill was actually Slim Bill with a fake beard on. Um, and so we're actually going to get right into that combat. Uh, so if we could all go ahead and roll initiative. It is two dire hog drawn wagons. They are uncovered wagons. Um, there is Durak uh, and one grunter on the front of one. Um, and then two grunters on... The other one so four grunters in total total two different wagons and they are coming up um alongside of the ms paint so one on either side uh, and i will go ahead and roll their initiative as well i'll get some music going it hopefully isn't too loud i'm gonna roll um two initiatives one for the wagon on, we'll just say uh left wagon and right wagon Wow, six and a three. I got a uh, twelve plus three, uh, so fifteen. I got a twenty-four. God dang, <laughs> Sean! Okay. Whew! Was quicker ready. on the draw. Ready to go, boy. So it will be uh, Sean Marston, John Belia, and then uh, the two Grunter wagons. Mm -hmm. 
How many bullets do we have? Um, I think I we had you all. Uh, you go to a shop. You gave us like eight, I think. Yeah. And we. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> for this one. Uh, we'll say that uh, the wagon on the left is these these dire hogs are much faster than your all's clockwork horses. Uh, so they have caught up with relative ease. Um, the one on the left is the uh, the hog snoot is like right parallel with um, the bench that you guys are sitting on. Um, the other one's a little bit further behind his snoots, like parallel with the back of the wagon. So he's a little bit further behind about 10 feet. Yeah, I'm going to pop one of these uh, dire hogs twice. Oh, shooting the dire hog. Mm hmm. That's a good idea, boy. Uh, okay. Uh, go ahead and roll it. Uh, 22. In a 19. Uh, let me see. Okay, those are both gonna hit. Um, okay. Let me get these. I forgot to even look up the stats for these things for some reason. Uh, that's bad on my part. Of course, you'd shoot the pig. Um, okay. These are special die hogs. I don't think they are 5e official. <laughs> Sources. Um, <laughs> both of those shots are going to hit. So, how much damage is that? Can you just tell me the damage. Uh, nine. I just rolled once for nine damage, so two shots. Okay, still alive after the nine. If you want, so if you shot the other one, I'm gonna do it again. Ten. In. That that uh, dire hog um, lets out this super high pitched and annoying uh, squeal as it's starting to slow down quite a bit. It's um, it's got two large bullet hoop holes uh, in the in the right side of it and. It's looking really bad. It may end up uh, bleeding out eventually uh, from these wounds because that was quite a bit of damage <laughs> for that one. Uh, it's <laughs> dropping back a little bit now. Jambalaya. Um, uh, Jambalaya's going to swivel around at the hips, level his rifle, activate his uh, sharpshooting uh, feet. Oh, so, uh, I'm going to roll with a minus five to attack. So that means I'm merely rolling at a plus three okay. to hit with my rifle. Hit! Oh, that's seven. <laughs> oh, that one is going to miss. God dang, this lack of suspension on this wagon. <laughs> Do you have another shot or? Nope. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so um, you were shooting at a, a pig. That's right. Yeah, uh, it you hit uh, the MS Paint hits into um, like a big holder on that side, on your right side of the wagon that you're sitting on. And as soon as it does, it, it's right when you take your shot, and it just goes pretty wide um, on the, even though it's a very large uh, pig. Um, okay, cool. It is now. Uh, a whole bunch of pigs are about to do a bunch of stuff. <laughs> um, the one that's now dropping back a little bit further with a very hurt pig. The, um, the pig that's not driving is going to try to jump onto the MS Paint. Um, I think they know how dire this dire hog is looking and uh, wants no part of it. Natural 20. Um, so that will be a 
pretty grand success. Um, he will hop onto the MS Paint and also be able to uh, pull himself up on top of the wagon. Um, the other one driving, hmm, is he going to bail out too? This dire hog doesn't have much life left in it. Um, no, he's cared for this pig since it was a little, a little dire pup. Um, so, uh, he's going to stick with it and he is going to try to kick it in gear, get it to catch up with you. And then he's going to draw his lead spitter pistol and try to hit you, uh, Sean Marston as an act of, okay, well he rolled a four plus five nine not gonna hit um i believe he only gets one attack he does he's got one attack so uh he's a little distracted trying to take care of his pig um the other two are going to um also kind of catch up and now these ones are even with you it is um the two drive you two and the two driving are just dead even um no matter how fast you know it's they're keeping pace with you now um one is going to jump into like onto your lap jambalaya or try to <laughs> what the hell <laughs> uh plus too. Okay, a 14, yeah. Uh, he jumps and lands on you. kind of knocks the wind out of you a little bit. Um, <laughs> and with that, he's going to punch you in the side of the ear. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> 17 plus... Um, plus yes. Yeah. Uh, so he's going to punch <laughs> you for five points of bludgeoning damage. The fuck? <laughs> Uh, the one driving. What kind of lap dance is this? <laughs> the, the one driving is going to, much like the other one, um, keep one hand on the reins, reach over, and try to take a shot at you. Um, and I'm going to have the ones that are driving and shooting have disadvantage. The last one didn't really need it, but um, I think it makes sense if you're trying to drive a wagon and shoot a pistol. Well, this one doesn't need it either. It was a four and an eight. They would have both missed anyway. Just shoots wide again. I mean, it's hard um, driving uh, a pig and shooting shots. Um, okay. Um, let's say that just... I, I want to say Durok's the one that jumped onto your lap, Jambalaya. Really? Yeah, because I didn't mention which one was Durok yet. Um, and now we're back up to Sean bitch. John Marston, you've got one on top of the wagon behind you, a grievously a injured hog, uh, one pig man driving that grievously injured hog, mm -hmm. <laughs> a pig on your buddy John Belia's lap, and then somebody driving another hog on the other side. So if I use action surge, can I get, do I get three attacks? Yeah, yeah you would, right? Right. All right, I'm gonna stab. Uh, what's his name? Um, Durock. Durock in the ear three times. <laughs> in the ear a few times. Three times. Good roll, bunch. Of me, me, me. Fucking American psycho. It's it's a beast. First one's uh, 18. Jesus Christ. Second one's 27. <laughs> Third one's 17. <laughs> this is fucking brutal. Um, let me get his stats pulled up because I think he's got different stats than the rest of the grunters. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of damage. How much damage was it? The first one's eight. The second one was a crit, so it's nine. And then the third one was six. Uh, <laughs> 17 plus 23. Yeah. Okay, he's at. He's still alive. Uh, his face will never look the same again. <laughs> um, as you're just. Uh, oh, he's made a real pig zero things. Who's uh, the one kind of driving uh, at the moment, or trying to? Um, 
like which one of you two would be because we can let it we can let them just go um but thanks i, I guess at the be... moment they're just running because right yeah. sean's stabbing and i've got this fucking <laughs> bleeding pig sat on my lap <laughs> okay cool uh john Valai, it's your turn i want to just pick him up and throw him off like preferably like under the wheels okay <laughs> um yeah let's do uh we'll do opposed Athletics checks, I think that would be cool. I'm pretty strong. Yeah. He got uh, a 15 plus two. Oh, he beats me then. So he I just um, got a 15. He is uh, kind of hanging on. Um, I don't think he was really thinking things through when he jumped onto your lap. Um, <laughs> but now that he is and he's laying there, uh, he weighs a ton. Jambalaya, um, and maybe that's why. Uh, so it's probably a mixture of you getting the wind knocked out of you, having this, you know, three hundred pound pig man on your lap. Yeah. Um, well, I figured like there's not a lot else I can do, right? I'm like, I was holding my <laughs> rifle, so it's like pressed up against me. I can't like get my hands out to do anything. I've just got to try and like sh- shove this like fat pig guy off my off my um, junk. <laughs> Um, Stop bumping and grinding. Uh, let's see. Would Take you, natural. Uh, would you have any other... If that was your action, would you have anything else? Um, I don't think so, any really. Bonuses, I mean, or any bonus actions? Or? Two weapon fighting. Uh, oh, I could do Hunter's Mark, maybe? As a bonus action. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I guess, yeah, I guess I'll just mark um, Jorok as my <laughs> preferred <laughs> quarry. <laughs> okay. Um, um, yeah, I'll do that. Oh, Why shoot, not? it's fucking grunter time now. Oh, uh, things about to get. Um, okay. We'll go ahead and... Uh, the one driving the very hurt pig um, is starting to lose some ground now, lose some steam. He's falling behind you all, but he's he's not like out of the situation at all. Um, but he's a no little... animals were harmed during the making of this episode. <laughs> he's a little bit behind your guys' wagon now. He doesn't really have a clear shot on either of you, so he can't take a shot right now. Um, the one on the roof. <laughs> is going to he's going to reach down and try to he's going to be punching Sean Marston in the side of the head but he's going to be trying to like push him off uh, you know it's, it's going to be uh, like a forceful punch to try to you know knock you kind of splay you off of the wagon when we're um, rolling so you will follow through. You will make um, uh, an athletic saving throw. Which now that I say it, I think you you're actually proficient in those saving throws, aren't you? Oh no! Well, never mind. Don't even worry about it, Sean. Um, because I was gonna roll the hit first with that, and he rolled a nat one. Um, <laughs> so he like swings wild and <laughs> actually tumbles off <laughs> over you. And when he falls down, he gets caught up in um, some harnessing that is around, like, from the horses to the wagon and then down the side of the wagon. And he's getting drugged by his foot uh, down, like, <laughs> right next to you, Sean Marston. Like, within so he's taken care of. We can just um, leave him there. <laughs> the, uh, the other one driving, we'll go ahead and have him try to take another shot at John Belia with disadvantage. And it's not going to need it. It was an 8 plus 5, 13. Nope. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, distracted, shooting. He's trying to uh, dodge some things with his uh, dire pog, um, which now I'm just realizing that it sounds dirty, too. Uh, <laughs> dire hog. <laughs> um, riding the flesh train to hog town and then riding out on a giant hog. <laughs> now, Dura. Um... 
shit. Hold on. Can I'm... we talk about this? I think you you might have realized the error of your ways when you jumped in my life and got stabbed in the ear three times there, boy. <laughs> um. Okay. Durak uh, is going to roll a little bit so that he's kind of smushing between you two. Um, <laughs> it's more so now that like most of his weight's now on Sean Marston. And okay. he's going to, just with his shoulder, try to um, ram you off, John Belaya. Um, so we'll do, with this, since it's not going to be a, a, a punch, and we're going to do a post athletics like uh, you two did before. Like it's a, it's a grapple, basically. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Uh, well, this one's not nearly as good. Um, uh, 10 total. 22. Damn it. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, now he's just kind of sitting in between you guys. Uh, bleeding. Well, this is awkward. <laughs> his ear that's bleeding is on you, Sean Marston. So he's kind of like most of his weight's on you. Uh, and now we're up to you, Sean Marston. I guess I'm going to stab him twice. <laughs> I didn't picture this uh, this wagon fight going like this at all. <laughs> well, in, no mandatory lap dances. So, uh, uh, ear 16. violence. <laughs> 16? Mm -hmm. That's going to hit. And a 15. A 15. That is also going to hit. Um, it's 5 and then so uh, 13 damage. Durak is getting carved up, uh, <laughs> quite like uh, a slab, you know, slab of pork meat. Um, still alive, getting even more blood on you than now, though, Sean Marston. Um, and your your outfit is just getting covered. Uh, <laughs> Jambalaya. Remember, you've got uh, Hunter's Mark. I forget what Hunter's Mark does, but... It does additional... <laughs> additional d6 damage if I hit with a an attack so I probably won't need it to be honest if he's that badly d messed up yeah. but I take it now that he's sat between us I've got my arms free yes okay well I'm just going to shoot him in the face then <laughs> okay <laughs> right, I'm not going to bother with the marksmanship because I don't think it really applies at point blank range um, and I really want to make sure I hit him so I'll take the plus 8 instead of the plus 3 uh, not one. So. Not one. Oh, <laughs> no. no. Your gun misfires. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, you get this thing, like, pressed right up against uh, the side of his head. And when you pull the trigger, it you just hear an audible click. And you've, you've had this happen before. You know exactly what that means. You know now <laughs> if you're going to be firing this gun, you've got to uh, spin an action and... Uh, fix the jam. God dang you lucky son of a sow. <laughs> it really is. Um Okay, uh pig's turn. Um the one on the uh, wagon with the hurt pig is now just falling more and more behind, like twenty feet behind the wagon now. Um uh, that pig just really was on its last leg, so just it does not have the steam to keep up. Um the one that's being drugged by the wa uh, the roping, is he going to try to climb up, or is he going to just take disadvantage shots at Sean Marston? He, I'm gonna be have him upside keep, down. Yeah, I'm gonna have him just be upside down, just being dragged, just try to uh, take a shot that's, at Sean Marston. Well, well you know, I, I admire his dedication to his job. <laughs> I mean. Uh, first one was a 16 without his modifier, so that one would hit. An, um, an 8 plus 5, a 13. I don't think Sean Morrison has the highest armor, do you? Uh, 15. Damn it. Uh, okay. Uh, it, it it's close. Um, almost hit your hat. Um, the one that is in the, uh, driving the, uh, the other wagon that's next to you all, is going to actually try to ram you 
both. Um, so you two both make uh, athletic saving throws to not be uh, jostled around. I'll have uh, I'll have uh, Duroc do the same. Fourteen. Seven. <laughs> oh, Sean Marston. Um, when he uh, bucks into you, um, Duroc and John Belaya are able to kind of withstand the shock. Uh, Sean Marston, you uh, get knocked over the side, and you are now tangled into. You get your leg caught into um, the actual um, reins. Oh, great. Um, like not the reins, but the uh, where it's really connecting the uh, horses to the um, to the wagon. Uh, so you're mm-hmm. right upside down next to the dude who's further down the wagon a little bit, and you both just <laughs> upside down staring at each other. Um, John, John, <laughs> help me, boy! I'm coming, John. <laughs> I gotta get this pig boy out of the way. I'm coming. I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm, I'm coming for you, boy. Durak. My special boy. Ooh, oh, so many things Durak could do. Oh, especially now with Sean in the ropes. Um, I think Durak would really, really, really like to be the sole person driving this wagon. So I think Durak is going to try again to push Jambalaya off to the side. Yeah, he is. Uh, Durak wants control of this MS paint right now. Um, so another athletics uh, uh, proposed roll, please, Jerome, do. Uh, 18. Oh, dirty 20. Fuck. Uh, Jerundu, <laughs> he shoulder checks into you, and when he does that, you actually, um, he hits you really hard uh, with that dirty 20. So hard, maybe a little bit too hard, because you actually go over the gap between the wagons, and the other one that just, you know, rammed into you all, so that he's pretty close. And you're going to land across the lap of the other one driving on his wagon. And uh, uh, Sean Marston. Afternoon, Feather. Oh, boy. So you're upside I guess I'm going to try yeah. to shoot Duroc twice. Okay. Disadvantage. Oh, I hope. Oh, man. This could be fun if this kills him. <laughs> it's just an out of control wagon. First one, a 12 and a 25. A 25 so. hits, 12 does not. Yeah. You can't have much left in the time. And then a uh, 29 and a 20. Oh, I forgot we had... Oh, I forgot we had disadvantage. Um, right. So, the, yeah. So, so the, the second f- one will hit. Yes. The first shot is going to miss because the 12. Second shot will hit him. 13 damage. <laughs> you want to describe how you killed the rock <laughs> and leave this wagon? I, I'm just upside down and shoot him under his jaw. Oh, he goes man. up through his head. And he slumps over and falls, and uh, the wheels of the MS Paint go over him once and then twice. And uh, <laughs> Fuck the that dude up. Clockwork horses <laughs> uh, just keep on going. Um, Geronda, you want to move your mark? I think you can move your mark when your target dies, can't you? Yeah, it's a bonus action, so... It's... Okay, it's your turn now. Uh, let me look. Let me just check that. So for John Belay, you now see that the MS Paint, you cannot see Sean Marston on the other side of the wagon. You cannot see the other grunter on the other side of the wagon. Um, You do see this grunter that you're on their lap. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Well, I kind of feel like when I got shoulder checked off, I dropped my um, misfired rifle in like the uh, the footwell of uh, the MS paint. Okay. I'm just like sprawled over this dude's lap. <laughs> <laughs> like, with, with my hands free. It's it's um, the, so, um, it's the uh, the guard that you talk to. Um, the first grunter you ever talk to outside. 
the one with the really piggy voice, uh, mm -hmm. it's that guy that you're on his lap. <clears throat> Killed your boss. You sure you want to keep doing this? <laughs> yeah, I'm the boss now. <laughs> All right, that's how it's going to be. So he just pulls out his Bowie knife and um, light hammer. Well, this guy's laugh just sort of goes home. Uh, Big G just like flailing. So, yeah, with a with a claw hammer in one hand and a Bowie knife in the other. Oh, nice. Uh, so Bowie knife is in that one. Light hammer is a. 12. 12. That's going to miss too. No, oh, so, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's probably just because of your. Because um... I've got like a face full of his crotch. That's why. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he has I ain't no got up to a stabbing angle. He has no shirt on, so it's just a whole thing. Um, He's all bristly and greasy. Yeah, he actually was taking a mud bath dip just before this, so he's still kind of wet and slimy from that mud. Um, all right, John, um, the one upside down by you. Mm -hmm. The upside is, down by you. <laughs> um, is going to try to climb up. Um, that's what he's gonna do for his turn. He's gonna try to. He doesn't like his. The blood's rushing to his head now. He doesn't like this anymore. He's gonna try to get back up into the wagon. Uh, he rolled a a, dirt, uh, a total of an 18, so he is able to grab a hold of the ropes that are tying around his legs, kind of pull himself up, do a crunch, which is pretty impressive for uh, this dude's belly. Uh, and is able to climb into the seat of the wagon, and he actually takes control of the reins. Um, the other one on that you're on their lap, uh, Jambalaya, um, he still needs one hand to control the uh, the, the dire pig. Um, I just saw that they can do a thing of reaction called reflux when they're hit by a non-magical attack they can uh use their belly to uh laugh or belly lard to uh take 1d4 less damage <laughs> um that's not applicable here i just thought that was funny um he don't, they don't have any melee weapons so it's just gonna be a punch um like right to the back of your hand ahead jambalaya a hammer fist it's a plus four Uh, six. Um, so he's. It's just kind of. It looks what? like a school kids fight right now. You're just like swinging at him with, and he's like trying to knock uh, your shit out of the way. Well, I'd um, be like kind of like swinging over my back, like over my shoulders, because he's I'm like <laughs> sprawled across his lap, like. Um, Go so stab you. Now we're back up to Sean Marston. This is really undignified, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I guess I'll try to climb back up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sean, don't die! Athletics <laughs> check. Yeah, Double Eye has no idea what's happening to Sean right now. Ah, my boy, you killed my boy! <laughs> the dog killed my special boy! Oh, shit, I got a four. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, you just... You cannot... You, if anything, you're like getting more tangled in these ropes as you're trying to get up. <laughs> uh, Jambalaya. Uh, I'm just try, try desperately to flail at this dude again so I can find out what's happened to my boy. <laughs> uh, that is a 23 and a 20. Yes, both of those will actually hit. Okay, so. Nah. 1d4 plus 3, that's uh, 4. But plus. A d6. Which is 6, so that's 10 damage off the first attack. And then. Light hammer. That's 4 plus another d6. 7. 17 damage. So seven, 17 damage. So, um, 
Durak was kind of the biggest pig uh, of all of them. And you think that's maybe like why he even tried to be a leader, tried to take over. It's kind of in his mind, you know, the biggest pig should be the leader. Um, these ones don't seem as sturdy as Durak was. Um, it is going to be still alive, but uh, the hits that Durak took, it seems like obviously they would have they would have done this one in a long time ago because just from that one hammer hit and that one Bowie knife stab, um, he's already he's looking scared, he's looking uh, shocked, and um, does not does not look good at all. Um, Sean Marston, you just got advantage from chat from Tanya. Uh, Save my boy! <laughs> Save my boy, Tanya! Um, yeah, by the way, if you're watching, I tried to add some new um, chat stuff. Um, so, if you click on, it's like a little circle. If you're on mobile, it's like a, um, to be honest, I forget how you do it on mobile. If you're watching in the app. Next to the chat box, there's like a little round bubble looking thing. Yeah, bubble. Or it's a, it's sometimes bubble. a treasure chest, you've got points. Yeah. yeah, and the more you talk in chat, the more points you earn, and then um, you can redeem those for different things, like calling down bolts of lightning in our d, &D game to strike down enemies. Um, or giving I mean, players I've got like, advantage. I've got like 12,000 points, so I could just be giving us advantage all day long, but that seems like... <laughs> just be fucking that, that kind of seems like a bit cheap to sort of give myself <laughs> advantage. Um, so I'm not going to do that. Um... <laughs> So Sean Marston, when he gets oh, lightning! I could spend all of my points to call lightning. <laughs> um, but first, Sean Marston, um, that one that is now driving your wagon is... What's he going to do to me? He is going to take out his lead spitter pistol and sh try to shoot at the ropes that you're tangled up in. That's not good. <laughs> oh my goodness, a three plus a two, a five. Um, it almost hits you. Um, so you're not even sure if he was aiming at you or the ropes. Um, <laughs> but that's all. He can only do one shot per turn. Uh, the other one that Jerundu has been just mauling is going to... He doesn't oh, that one doesn't have a lot of options does it uh he, he's just gonna try to just pig pig punch you um <laughs> don't have special, to end like this that's his special move a uh, 14 nope oh wait uh 15 actually no, no it is 14 Still never, mind. never mind it's 14 um don't matter either way okay well ain't he, getting past my chainmail poncho <laughs> he punches you right in the chest and he's like what the fuck is that <laughs> the goddamn chainmail poncho you stupid pig man <laughs> Told you it didn't have to end this way. Sean Marston, we're back up to you. And you have got an advantage right. on this next thing you want to try. Yeah, yeah I'm going to try and get up again. That's okay. my advantage. Come on, come on. We're looking for a 12, just so you know. Are you serious? What did you roll? Two, twice. <laughs> Oh my god, John Marston, it just died in these rooms. I'm gonna take a screenshot of that. <laughs> uh, it's it's probably a good thing your buddy Jambalaya can't see you right now, because that's probably kind of embarrassing. You like just tried so hard. How do I get two net ones in a row? <laughs> um, okay, uh, we'll go to Jambalaya. Uh, Jambalaya, the pig you're on, is looking just uh, pretty brutal. Told you didn't have to end this way, but this is what you asked for. That's a 14. Hit. Hits. And a 12. That one misses. That one misses. Okay, so Bowie Knife does. 3 plus 3, 6 plus D6. 4. Another 10. Points of damage. Okay. Um, still alive. Uh, he's it. Screw oh. it. I'm going to I'm gonna action surge. Oh. I'm going <laughs> to finish this boy off. I need to get back and find out what's going on with my special boy. Sean, you've got another advantage. Uh, Tanya really wants you to get up. Yes. Oh, 
uh, that one's going to be a miss straight away because I rolled a three. <laughs> <laughs> and that one is 13. 13 misses just barely. Dang, waste of action, Serge. Oh, man. Uh, well, you get a couple more swings in at this thing. It's like, okay, maybe we can't talk about this. <laughs> um, <laughs> wait, it's my turn. Never mind. <laughs> He's going to try to punch you. <laughs> Wait, is it his? Yeah, it seems like a. I yeah, guess it would was, be. Yeah, I guess that was a really fast uh, turn. Um, four plus four, that's a big old eight. Um, no, like, maybe we really should talk about this. <laughs> He's like trying to hit your poncho again. Now, you're giving me mixed messages, boy. <laughs> um, the other one is going to. I'm trying to think if maybe it's a little bit so embarrassed about how bad that shot was that. Um, it's instead of trying to uh, shoot at Sean Morrison as he's trying to get up. Uh, hmm, shouldn't take me this long to pick, but I've got a couple of choices. Um, he sees his buddy pig uh, just getting brutalized by John Belaya and thinks that that might be a little bit of an easier shot to take. So he's going to uh, point over at John Belaya and he's going to have disadvantage because he's also trying to drive this wagon. Um, uh, well, I think we found out last time that 11 plus 4, 15 does not hit you, does it? Nope. Uh, that one actually hits your, uh, chainmail poncho also. Um, is it a poncho on top of chainmail? Yeah, it's like, uh, I got like a, a nice fancy woven poncho over the top of some okay. real nice well, riveted chainmail. Well, hole in the nice woven poncho. And as it hit into it, it hit, and like the bullet slammed into your uh, chainmail, and you know, mm -hmm. there's not, now like a flattened bullet stuck in your chainmail. Sean Marson. You spoiled my weave! Sean Where's Marson, my boy? Where's my special again. boy? Okay, I'm gonna use my advantage again. Let's see. <laughs> we gotta get you up. Double 91. It's gonna there be go. very anticlimactic if you're just stuck in these ropes the whole. A nine. And an 18. Okay. Oh, jeez. That 18 is going to get it's you. It's still up. not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> you hang upside down for the next hour. <laughs> Jambalaya, you see Sean Marson climb back into. He's alive! Right. Praise the giant singing Scout Cowboy. He's still alive. I'm still here, boy. And I love you, boy. Don't you ever scare me like that again. I'm sorry, Daddy. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I'm going to hold you so tight tonight. We need to one time find out that Jambalaya is actually Sean Marston's, like, estranged daddy. <laughs> uh, Jambalaya's it's gonna here make a lot of the train scenes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> all right. I really need to finish off this fucking pig. <laughs> you, I, I'm telling you, you need one more hit on that thing. I'm sick of this motherfucker. Right. <laughs> Uh, 17 and a 11. Uh, the 17 is going to hit, yes. Okay, but, 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 buoy knife. <laughs> 3 plus 3, 6 plus d6 is 7. 7, nice. Yep. Go ahead and describe how you uh, got it. I there. just straight up gut this motherfucker. <laughs> I, I pull out his chitlins. <laughs> I picture open it, open him up at the guts and pull out his chitlins. That's what I do. I picture as cowboys, you all have probably maybe at, at one point in your life like butchered a pig before for you know bacon and things like that. Um, sure. So this. I mean, just last episode, I told a story about how you can harvest bacon from a pig for thirty years and not kill it. Yeah, you uh, you went a much faster route for this one. Uh, yeah, I took the express route. <laughs> Um, so now you are able to uh, grab the reins of this um, this hot dire hog uh, dri uh, driven wagon. Um, the last one standing. <laughs> I almost I almost had him try to push on Marston off again. Um, <laughs> he is Good. going to um, let go of the reins. And try to take a shot at Sean Marston. 
Uh... <laughs> so the first one yeah. was a nat 20, but I should have disadvantage, shouldn't I? Because he's so close. Yeah. To me. Oh, an 18 plus 4. So it's still going to hit, but at least it's not going to be um, double dice damage. Um, and you know what? I really want to start doing, instead of uh, nat 20s being just you roll a damage dice twice, I really like nat 20s being you do one max damage die and then roll one damage die. I I think that's kind of more exciting for crits than... Because you could, you could roll two damage dies and get two ones on it. It's like that's not a very good crit right there um so this is going to be a d10 plus plus nothing just a d10 all right sean um oh the full 10 uh mm. hit sean marson uh square in the thigh actually and it goes clean in and out the other side ow god damn <laughs> it's your turn now sean marson he's the last pick of a round Right in them strong thighs. I'm gonna try and stab him. Stab him. I'm stab him. A 13 and a 16. 16 will hit. So one stab, it's gonna miss him. Uh, again, it's kind of a rocky ride as you're uh, rolling through. Other one is going to stab him. Six damage. Six damage, okay. All right. Uh, Jambalaya, you were up. Uh, you see Sean Marson uh, stabbing this pig that just shot him in the thigh on this other wagon. I'm coming for you, special boy. <laughs> how um, how far is it between the wagons at it's this point? It's only like a... Uh, uh, so what it comes down to is it will be a uh, athletics... Uh, Mm, no, I'm not asking if I can jump. Is it? Is it less okay. than 15 feet? <laughs> yes, it is less than 15 feet. The gap on okay. the moon is like, yeah, it's probably like five. It's varying a little bit between like five and ten feet as they're kind of swimming I'm a, a I'm a going lasso the feller. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, you want me to take disadvantage on that? I'd imagine yeah. since I'm controlling the pig oh, wait, wagon. Are you controlling it, or is it just? Well, I guess I guess so. If I want I want it to stop. It'll keep within 15 feet okay. so I can okay. do my lasso. Yeah. Hit it up. Uh, 23. Oh, come on. And 22. <laughs> yes. Oh, and wow. So your lasso has 15 foot range, doesn't it? Yes. And how far does it pull then? Uh, I think you said 10 feet. So I've, but uh, up to 10 feet. I just want to. Pull him, wow. yoke him straight off the, um, <laughs> off the <laughs> off the wagon, and then just drag him. Uh, yeah, you uh, you get him as soon as he's like turned towards Sean Marson and shooting him into his legs. Uh, you lasso right around his neck and pull him um, down into the space uh, between the wagons. Um, I'm trying to think what. Uh, if he would come out of the lasso, I don't know a lot about how lassos work. I think it'd just be pulled taut around him. Mm -hmm. And now he's just getting dragged. It. So he'd just be, yeah, he's, he's not gonna live. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, not for long. Realistically, I mean, he I'm, might get another round in. Um, how, uh, let me. I'm, Depends how fast the wagons are going, I guess. Yeah. But if going, there's a, a, a somebody, dead run. He isn't going to last very long. Yeah, if somebody falls off, they take um, the adventure. Oh, it's a D6. Uh, like, right away, uh, he's going to take a D6 of damage from that. Uh, so he takes three Plus points he's of effectively damage. got a noose around his neck from yeah, how you just described uh, it. So. He's not going to last long at all. Um, well, it's his turn. Um, wow, I really wish these guys had some knives or something. <laughs> but he doesn't. <laughs> Um, Don't try to chew through that lasso, boy. <laughs> he was either gonna he was either gonna try to chew through it or shoot it, um, and I think he's gonna try to shoot it um, with disadvantage, of course, because he's got a fucking lasso around his neck. Um, oh, but he he's actually gonna hit it. Uh, he's going to shoot. Oh shit! 
You'll have to, maybe you can knit yourself another lasso because uh, it's just a bit of it's just a bit of rope, isn't it? So yeah. I can just cut cut off the end and tie a new one. Yeah, yeah, tie a new knot on it. Uh, because he shoots this one, um, like about a foot away from where it's tied to his neck, and then you just see him. Your your all's wagons are going pretty quick at this moment, uh, kicking mm-hmm. up dirt. Uh, you look back and you just see him rolling backwards. <laughs> And he's just left. You're a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, Got him. And <laughs> and if you uh, if you keep watching a little bit longer, eventually you'll see that other wagon that's kind of like limping along, um, just like way in the distance, scoop him up, and then just slowly turn and start walking back towards the trough. I uh, race you back to. West Haller, then I guess. Yeah, I'm going. We're gonna keep this pig and the pig wagon, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, boy. Oh, this giant pig. <laughs> I wonder if Hollywood will be friends with him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to get you the stats for the uh, the dire hog now. <laughs> since, you, uh, since it's gonna be your new pet. Um. After, uh, let me change this music. Um, from the battle music after um, things kind of die down a little bit and uh, you realize that you know there's there's no more gunfire or anything popping off um, Sean Marston you hear from the back of the MS paint um, a knock and then a few moments go by and then the little window slides open and you see Slim Bill's eyes um, looking at you well did you did you get them all yeah, we did. You got you got Durock. He's going dead now. He's a goner. I stabbed him in the ear three times. <laughs> he tried to give me a lap dance. <laughs> Just yelling over from the other wagon. Oh yeah, I see. Yeah, why didn't Slim Bill again. help us out? Because he's a punk bitch. <laughs> he is a punk. Dude. <laughs> I just um, traded information. I don't do no fighting. You've got to go say rescue me from my house and take me away and fight all the games. Exactly. Dude. I'm more of an information dump. I'm not much of a fighter. But You're right. I, you are. You You is a dump. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I did hear you mention going to West Hollow. We don't want yeah. to go to West Hollow. You, if you are really seeking information on the Sky Cowboys, we're going to need to go to Griffin's Butte. Some people call it Griffin's butt as like a funny joke. Y'all might have heard of it. No, I ain't never explored Griffin's butt before. <laughs> so um, here, you know what? Just let me. Uh, if you stop, I can come out and sit with you, Sean Marston, and we can. I can navigate you. All right. Oh, d- uh, ditch this wagon and then like hitch the hog to the MS paint with okay. the clockwork horses. Okay, so because yeah, uh, the wagon's not as cool as the fucking hog is. Um, okay, yeah, we'll um, we can set it up so that um, I'm trying to think of how that like orientation of uh, uh, horses would be. Would it be like clockwork horses then hog? In the front. I guess we'd have the because the hog's gonna be like as like probably as wide as like two clockwork horses, right? <laughs> yes. So we just have that like in the lead. Okay. And then the clockwork horses behind it. Yeah. Um. So you three all smush in uh, to the driver's seat. Um, Slim Bill. You, you I mean you know that his name's a little ironic. Um. He's anything mm-hmm. but slim. Um. So he is kind of spilling over onto both of you, uh, sitting in the middle. Um, there's like a third of his body on both of you. And, um, he starts telling you all all about Griffin's Butte. Um, not a lot of people believe that Griffin's Butte is even a real thing. There's people that have... How does it poop? Griffin's Butte. It's this large rock formation out in the desert that a lot of people will see it. And then if they go back looking for it, they'll never see it again. Those that see it and try to go up to it recount tales of uh, some mystery gunslinger off in the distance, popping shots at them, warning shots usually, 
until they turn around and flee. No one's ever really gotten to Griffin's Butte. However, I know, my sources tell me, that is where you want to go to find out any information about this here Sky Cowboy. This <laughs> is Sky Cowboy? <laughs> um, I do want to retcon one thing. Um, I, I guess it's, it's going to be kind of a big retcon. Uh, well, just the timeline. <laughs> Uh, where, you know how you all went right when you killed a quick clink McCrank <laughs> directly to, uh, Bellis Rustgear's house, got your mission yeah. and immediately came here. Um, the only thing I want to retcon is that, um, you all actually spent some time in West Hollow, um, trying to like investigate a little bit about the Sky Cowboy, um, uh, mm -hmm. before you got pointed towards the trap trough. Um, just so we can say, like, a, a, there's a, we're going to add, like, a month's time in there. Uh, just because I didn't read far enough into this adventure to um, realize that you're not supposed to go directly from one to the other um, at the time. So uh, just know that going forward from here on. Uh, that That's fine. It's about a month since McClink, uh, Quick Clink McCrank has died. I just, I just think the turnover of time was like everything happened in like a day, which was. A bit... <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, it's supposed bit, to be like you guys kill Quick Clink McCrank and then like hang out in West Hollow for a little bit and then go into mm -hmm. this one. Um, and I just had you guys go straight into this one. So that was my bad. Um, it don't, don't It don't matter. It's fine. Totally cool. Um, so, I mean, it's at this point, it's kind of, uh, it's later, uh, getting pretty late in, into the night, actually, uh, because you guys left the trough at night, at like uh, mm -hmm. 8 or 9 at night, 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock at night, uh, I think is when you guys did the jailbreak. I think it was later than that because it was like 11 o'clock when, when, uh, when the saloon closed. Yeah. 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 So, uh, I mean, obviously, the whole uh, the hog chase only lasted, you know, a minute or two. Uh, it seemed a lot longer on stream. But <laughs> uh, so now you all have just been reconfiguring your um, the hog with the horses and just have been going off into the desert. Um, and this stretch of the desert, there, there's no roads. It is just as far as the eye can see. You can't see the trough anymore behind you. You can't see West Hollow. You can't see anything. You are out in just the middle of the desert. Um, and it goes that way, I mean, for it's going to be a few hours' journey. Um, so I don't know what you two want to do. Um, I don't know if you two want to, um, I don't know, try to catch up sleep or uh, have some conversations with Slim Bill, ask any questions. Slim Bill, you ever, you seem like a man of culture. You ever uh, find yourself in Saint Denis? Uh, what's, uh, what's that again? Well, it's a, it's a big city. It's, uh, I don't like it much because I don't like cities, but I, me and Sean was there a while back and we uh, went and go see a show. And it was, uh, it was a lady by the name of Emmeline and she played the trombone with her butthole. <laughs> You ever see that show? I've I've got to tell you, Jambalaya, I don't know what you know really about the grunter folk, but we kind of almost sprang into existence at the trough. So I've never locked the trough before, to be honest. Well, I say you can get it get yourself out in the wilds and you see a few things, but you go in them cities, you see a few things more, you know what I'm saying? Like I ain't never seen a lady out in the wilds in the cabin playing the trombone with her butthole before, but out in Saint Denis, they got that. Is it I, her name, good? Her name was... Yeah, there was, it was... She made a real good sound. It was called Madame Putin Toot. That was her name. Because she Putin. She did a poot, and she made the trombone too. <laughs> now, the thing is, she could play them low notes real good, but the high notes... They was the dangerous ones, because you know sometimes you go too high, you get a squeaker. And you get a little bit more than you bargained for, you know what I'm saying? 
you know, you get them high velocity, <laughs> high velocity farts. You might, you know, you don't get a bit of bit of resistance. You blow out more than you expected. First three rows used to have to wear raincoats. <laughs> Used to, so she got better. Well, at she's it. dead now. Oh, <laughs> how'd she die? One day she just she just sharded out a colon, fired out through the trombone. Some dogs stole it. They eventually found it. I mean, it flew straight out of the window. That's why I don't go to cities much. You get things like that happening. It ain't natural. <laughs> reason why John Malai doesn't go to cities. Well, that's just one trumpets. example. <laughs> Madame Putin toot. Damnedest thing I ever saw. Slim Bill's some commission of that. Yeah. <laughs> Slim Bill is um, he's Who the like... fuck would agree to draw that? <laughs> oh, there's, there's somebody out there. Uh, you want to find someone fucking dirty. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ, yeah, we're going to have to go with, like, search the fucking dark web for somebody <laughs> to do that. Tor.net. Um, Slim Bill's looking like he's, like, trying to think of anything to change this conversation. Um, and he's just coming up blank. That's the kind of noise she used to make. <laughs> Of course, the last note she made was like, <laughs> and you hear a shot ring out, and you see dust get kicked up right in front of the dire, uh, dire boar's um, feet. Whoa, 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 whoa. You see where that came from, Sean? You guys could roll a perception check. Yeah, as well as I'm trying to give a dialogue cue. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, see. Yep. Well, wait, uh, seven. I ain't got a clue. I was too busy telling my story about <laughs> Madame Putin, too. 17. Um, John Blight, even you, you can, you can tell um, easily where the shots came from, the general direction. But... Sean Marston, off in the like direction that the shot came from, um, Jambalaya, all you see is it looks like, even though it's nighttime here, um, it's still um, giving off this. It looks like like a heat mirage in the desert, which doesn't really make much sense because at night it's the temperatures aren't that aren't high enough to give off those heat waves, um, and for you. Jambalaya, you just see flat um, desert, as far as you can see. Sean Marston, you can actually discern these rocky formations from that mirage that are... Um, it's two different large uh, columns of rock that are jutting straight out directly ahead of you where the shots came from. You see them rocks over there, boy? Well, I can't see shit in this dark. My eyes is getting old. I seen some rocks, rock formations over there. All right. Well, I guess um, I guess we got a snapper over there then. What do you reckon? We try and we halt the wagon and see if we can sneak up on them, get the drop on them. Yeah. All now, right. listen. So, uh, um, a bit of advice. No one's ever actually been shot by these shots they're always just warning shots if I may suggest I believe we can just continue on and I think I don't think any harm will befall us well I tell you what then since you didn't do shit during <laughs> the escape you can drive the wagon and me and Sean is gonna sit in the back if you're so sure we ain't gonna get hit by nothing you can drive the wagon. All right, I think I owe that to you both for saving my life on the multitude. God dang right you do. Thinking, uh, uh, I thought my special boy was dead. <laughs> all right, you all hop in the back. All right, I'll, we will. Uh, I'll press on. Now, don't you interrupt us now, because we're going to get some cuddling time in. <laughs> uh, you two go in the back and start cuddling. 
And That's my special boy. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can look through the uh, the little window slider. Um, mm -hmm. Every once in a while, between your cuddles, and you you do hear these <laughs> rings of uh, gunfire, just like uh, these lead spl spitter uh, shots being fired off, just like every ten to fifteen seconds. And if you're looking out the window, you'll see them just kicking up like right in front of the clockwork horses, right in front of the dire hog. But never hitting um, any of the animals or the wagon or Slim Bill. And looking through that little uh, slider, you can see that the waves of the that desert heat mirage uh, start to ripple and shift Jambalaya. And now you can see um, the huge pillar of gleaming midnight blue stone that seems to like just be blossoming out of the ground right before you um, near its base you all are so close now um, there are two of those um, rock formations but Slim Bill is taking you right towards one and near the base of one you see a kobold figure armed with a a rifle like you've got Jambalaya which we can say that you mm -hmm. have uh, cleared the jam of it by the now so um, yeah Thank you. And this kobold has it <laughs> uh, slung over its shoulder, and it's got this deadly squint eyeing you all over from beneath a broad brimmed hat. And he's just. He'll lean out of the door. Evening. Well, y'all better come on in. I got some gopher on the fire. It's mighty hospitable. I do enjoy a fire roasted gopher. So the kobold will start to walk up a pretty narrow path so you all will have to park. Obviously the MS paint you guys can pack it up. Um mm -hmm. the dire hawk you'll apply it, you'll have to like tie it up somewhere down here. Um or tie the whole wagon up, however you guys want to do it. Uh, but he is, like, just walking, like, without even waiting for you guys, going up a path of the formation. Um, you take the MS paint, Sean, and I'll, uh, tie up this here hog. <laughs> All right, boy. Why is hog such a funny word? Because <laughs> it means dick. <laughs> I'll just put it bluntly for you. There you go. That's the answer. <laughs> Uh, you need me to roll some kind of animal handling or something like that? Yes, please. All right. Yep. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> um, it, as soon as you get close to it, Jambalaya, it bucks back and it kicks you um, for three points of damage. Pledging damage. Just knocks Ooh. you on your butt. Now, ain't no call for that, Hawk. God dang. You, well, I guess you just wait here, you're a grown ass hog. <laughs> you're a grown ass hog. Uh, I, you can try again. Um. <laughs> I'll give you one more try. <laughs> now, come on there, good hog. He's a good hog. Yeah. Uh, 19 this time. Okay. It's, it's like, it's just, you know, you're a new figure. Uh, it's usually around pigs, kind of like itself. Um,. So maybe after that first kick, it thinks that it maybe overreacted a little bit. Um, but af af after you kind of talk it down a little bit, it does follow you and let you tie it up to... Um, there's like a big boulder you can like tie um, tie around the way the formation is. It's like uh, really big at the bottom and it kind of goes up and it looks like kind of a natural um, post, tie down post almost. I'll just feed it what's left of the uh, train beef. The remnants of train beef left in my bag. Speaking of, this thing's probably going to eat quite a lot. So, uh... <laughs> That's maybe, fine. Maybe we'll have to, uh, as the story goes on and we can take care of this hog, we'll have to keep talking about how much we fucking feed this thing. Um... I'm pretty confident I can find food for him. So, uh... Following up this kobold figure... Uh, he leads you all to a cave that's cut into the middle of this rocky formation. So it's pretty high up because the rocky formation goes up like 
a hundred feet. So the path winds up around and around and around. Halfway up, there's the um, cave, and he's got a uh, fire burning, uh, a um, rotisserie with two gophers on it, and Slim my, Bill. My, is, my, rotisserie. Yeah, Slim Bill is obviously uh, walking up with you too, and uh, the kobold with his kind of. Uh, wild squint just eyes you all over and he says well now you may have guessed it but I am the one and only Squint Westwood oh am I pleased to make your acquaintance Mr. Westwood I am Jambala I paint the grass and this here is my friend and associate Sean Marston mm. so what brings you two to my cave not a lot of folks well, make it this far. Slim Bill is the one who can fill you in on the particulars, but we was trying to find out information about the Screaming Sky Cowboy. Or any other ghostly happenings regarding cowboys in these here parts. Oh, you mean the spirit of the untamed West. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. That's me. Okay. The spirit of the untamed west. I found this so, kobold here. Obviously, this isn't my natural body. I'm just possessing this kobold because, well, I like his stature. Well, that's that's nice. So, <laughs> what you doing? <laughs> what you doing in these parts? Why? Because people don't like being cowboys when they ain't supposed to. Turns out. Well, when. Ellis Rust, Rust Gear first created Quick Clank the Crank and those lead spitters. Something just happened where it felt like I was born. And from there, I started to inhabit Quick Clank the Crank. Um, but him being a clockwork fellow it just didn't really take. He overpowered me a lot more than I thought would be possible and kind of took it to an extreme, as West Hollow would demonstrate. But since then, I've yeah. just been wandering, living out alone down here, minding my business, watching the Wild West sprawl out across the fields. Well, I mean, I like it, but right. seems seems like a lot of folks around here don't very much. Well, it's not really something I can stop now. Even if this body were to die, the spirit's been born, this area's been changed. You can't unopen a door. Yeah, you can. It's called closing the door. Not if you rip the door off the hinges and threw it in the trash. Well, I mean, that's not really opening the door. That's destroying the door. Not if you destroy the door. I need to work on that. <laughs> I mean, I ain't gonna try and sit here and argue semantics with you all night, but that don't even makes no sense. So the, the door's been destroyed. What? what I mean, whatever we say. I mean, I mean, we, I, we can mix all the metaphors you want, but what you're basically saying is there ain't there ain't no undoing what's already been done. That's what you're saying, right? The bottle's been uncorked. You can't read All right, whatever model. metaphor you want to use, that's what you're saying. We can't change what's already done happened, right? Right. The the landscape's been changed. Well, it's how done. far is this here transformation going to go? The spreading's done. It's not going to stretch further than this area that's already been overtaken by the Wild West, the spirit of the untamed West like myself. So nothing more is going to be changed. So, so what? We just leave you, leave you be, and you run over this uh, this here part of the world now as uh, your own private domain, something like that. Is that what you want? I would very much enjoy that if I could just <laughs> kind of chill here. 
in this big cool cave, eat my gopher. Nobody bothers me. I just try to dissuade anybody with some warning shots. Tell a couple folks like yourselves, just keep on trucking right past my bullets. And then I had to give them this whole spiel to get them to just leave me alone. Well, I don't really know what to make of this. This is kind of above my pay grade. I mean, we got called out to get information about some kind of ghost cowboy and Bella's rescue is going to pay us. And Slim Bill says he knows shit and he don't know Jack all except he brought his hair. And I suppose that was correct. So thank you, Slim Bill, for that. But uh, what the hell? I don't know what to make of this, Sean. Mm, I guess we got to take tell you take the information back to Bellis or else we're gonna have to try and fight this here squint feather quite frankly doesn't seem so bad now he ain't a clockwork guy right yeah that I do apologize for quick clink McCrank that was more of AI malfunctions than anything on my part Well, you don't squat on your spurs. I guess we'll, uh... I don't know. I guess we'll partake of some of that there gopher. Yeah, you mind if we can... camp here for the night? Yeah, we can. you all can camp here for the night. Get you a bite of eat. Get you some rest. You're all looking, looking pretty beat up there. Uh, were you... What? Just in a fight. We were just wrestling with some hogs. I was gonna say, it looks like you got punched by a pig. You got a you got a hog sized fist mark right there on your face. Yeah, but I pulled out his chitlins, so uh, I guess it was all right. Yeah, I'm That's... covered in blood, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, both of us are like <laughs> yeah. drenched in gar and guts. And... <laughs> I didn't even really think about that, but yeah, you stabbed him in the ear like a bunch of times. I like pulled some guy's intestines out, like. His... <laughs> We look like a bunch of maniacs that just rolled out of the desert <laughs> in our color-changing wagon like a couple of serial killers. And he's like, well, yeah, come on in. <laughs> Have some gopher. <laughs> Sleep next to my bed. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, while you're all here, I just... I do know I'm the spirit of the Untamed West, but when I was kind of unleashed on the world there was another being also unleashed on the world it was a devil by the name of four armed F frost four armed fucking frost we saw that motherfucker right on the train it's a devil remember sean red skin four no oh yeah 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 i remember now called the train off the tracks now he's kind of like my counterpart him, you can kill him. I'm a spirit of the Untamed West. He is a just a demon of the of the uh, nine hells. That if you kill him, he'll just go back to the nine hells. But we were both born at the same time at the creation of Quick Clank McCrank and the Lead Spitters. So I give you my I give you my go ahead. If you see him, you can go ahead and put a bullet right well, I'm glad that we've him. got your permission to fight a devil um, that sounds real nice uh. <laughs> I'm, I'm only saying that because I truly believe that four guns false is probably my one true equal um, so why don't you fight him well, well because he's my one true equal I don't want to die well you're the spirit of the untamed west we're just a couple of cowpokes yeah, but there's two of you. And but neither three, one of us I mean, is a manifestation of the spirit of the West. <laughs> you got some kind of booms or special powers or something like that you can throw our way, maybe even the odds a little. Uh, if if this body ever dies on me, I can... Um, how about this? I'll promise you this. You two try to kill four and Frost for me. If this body ever dies... I'll uh, I'll split up, I'll split up into both of y'all too. You get half, half spirit of Untamed West, and you'll get my boots. 
So, in payment, you were offering to get inside me in the event that your my partner here had the event that your body dies. It'll just be like a little tickle on the back of your head, pretty much permanently. But you'll be really good at shooting some pistols and stuff. Well, I do like shooting pistols and stuff. I, I suppose it probably won't be the most uh, <laughs> the most unusual thing I've done in the last few days. I tell you what, we ain't from around these parts neither, but where we're from is pretty, pretty goddamn similar. So, I guess we'll. You got any clues as to where this uh, forearm fucker is? I mean, it's just I, I hear word about forearm Foss clear across the west, where um, he's just always up to uh, different kind of banditry, always derailing. I, I heard about him derailing the flesh train. Um, yeah, we was on it. That may have been for the best, because that thing sounded like a goddamn nightmare. That thing was gross. It sounded like a goddamn nightmare, <laughs> to be honest. So I mean, maybe they're just like, like, a cow came on board. I mean, what kind of fuckery is that? We stopped at a station, and nobody even stopped a goddamn cow from walking on. <laughs> Sean had to shoot it in the face, and we pushed it out of an asshole that opened up at the side of the train. I mean, what kind of, what is that? That ain't natural. Even less natural than to tr blow a trombone with your butthole. So I'm saying that might have That's been another like, story for a different time. Slim Bill could tell you that one. That might have been like forearm frost, like one good deed in the world. But be beyond that, it's usually like robbing banks and just he's getting up to, you know, general nonsense banditry. So I guess he could like go hang out at a bank. <laughs> Maybe he wait for him. I don't know. I don't really have any clues. I'm just saying, if you okay. ever come across him again and you want to put a bull between his eyes, that'd be pretty cool by me. All right, well, I guess that about concludes our business until such time as your body dies and you uh, split up and enter inside me and my partner. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, we don't need to talk about that for for tonight. I mean, we can just enjoy some good... Just have some good old-fashioned spit-roasted gopher. Good old gopher. It's one of my favorites. It's really the only thing I ever find around here. I don't think I've ever eaten anything besides gopher, to be honest. So maybe have you ever found in, uh, one of them there iguanas? No, not yet. Damn, it's tell, like a big, damn, tell, tell. It's like a big lizard thing. thing. Oh, that's right, I yeah. Really eat Just don't get confused with a Gila monster, because them things is poisonous, so you don't want to eat them. You get an iguana? You can take off his tail. Real good, real good eating. Can you just eat the tail? That's right. Well, you can boil up the whole thing if you want. And make yourself a soup. Okay, but the tail's the best. Well, the best. The tail's the best bit. The tail's the best bit. Nicest meat. I didn't think I could eat those things because they looked really hard. Well, you gotta like peel off the the hard parts and just eat the soft bits on the inside. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. I've always just eaten these gophers whole. Just stuck them on. That's why it's the. I did wonder why they still had like fur and things well, still it attached. Well, usually burns the fur off the fire. I'm just yeah, but you can see a little fire. bit there where it ain't been in the flames. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. Generally, what yeah. what living people do is they skins the animals and then they uh, they eat them. That's starting to make a lot more sense now. I'm only mm, like right. forty days old or something like that, so I'm still learning. That's uh, fair enough. Uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I ain't here to tell you how to live your life, Mister Spirit of the West. I'm just trying to give you some pro tips. And I've lived in these. Uh, I lived out in these natures for about uh, forty some years. You know, I seen a thing or two. I cook things on a campfire. You want, you want to show you how to make squirrel pie? Do you have any squirrels? No, but we can find some. You all look mighty tired. It's like two in the morning right now. <laughs> I am <laughs> rather tired. I, I got supposed to <laughs> wait until morning. I'm going to go find some squirrels. Uh, so we'll... Uh, October, my mic stand. We'll have everybody uh, tucker in for the night. Just so you guys could get some long rest in and get healed up. Yes, please. Um, and when you wake the next morning, uh, you see uh, Squint Westwood... Uh, scrounging up some breakfast, uh, trying to, you see him, like, running around, uh, just outside the cave, chasing a squirrel down, um, trying to catch it by the tail. 
and then oh no no that ain't how you do that <laughs> it looks yeah it looks like this is definitely the first i don't why is there a squ- i don't know why there's a squirrel out here uh he's trying to catch it though um so he's just outside the cave and as you're all watching him uh pretty hilariously fail at catching the squirrel you see further down on the plains in the desert this sandstorm start to get kicked up um not an actual sandstorm, but just dust getting kicked up from uh, multiple horses uh, riding through. And looking down, you see that there are a total of four blood red horses kicking up this dust. Uh, there are three um, mixtures of there's uh, humans, kobold, uh, a human, a kobold, and a half orc all in uh, ponchos uh, but leading the way is none other than four-armed Faust himself and he's got two arms on the reins of the horse and two arms straight up in the air as if trying to approach you all and parlay with you uh, 7.35 hmm I'm trying to think if we want to get into um I think this is kind of like a natural sort of I think this is a good I think this is a good uh stopping spot a good cliffhanger as much as I don't want to shortchange our fantastic audience but this would sort of be starting a new chapter wouldn't it yes yes I like I like this as a good cliffhanger so we will end it there with uh Forum Foss and his posse um, approaching Griffin's butt. Um, <laughs> I'm about to enter Griffin's butt, <laughs> and I shall not withdraw, no matter how messy it may become. <laughs> uh, so with that, uh, let's go ahead and plug all of our stuff. Um, Jerondo, what do you want to talk about? Uh, I want to talk about my deep rooted psychological problems but um also uh promote rolf weird i play silas lancaster uh the elderly vampire and romantically fixated with uh, adam's character filbert um that's every month we record every, like every month um we drop new episodes on itunes and your podcatchers every other friday um also, I am co-host of Dice Talk with the very talented Jeremy Fair, um, which drops on alternate Wednesdays. Every other Wednesday that isn't a Shitty Cowboys podcast drop day is a Dice Talk drop day. And also, mon- come Monday, uh, yourself and I, we will be um, starting up a new stream oh, yeah. series, uh, the Modrus Bloodsport Association, in which we will both be uh, commentators and co-DMs as we lead uh, parties of professional adventurers through uh, arena encounters uh, each week. Did you figure out your names yet? I haven't picked my name yet. Uh, uh, I've got a, a short list. Yeah, yeah. Dredd giving me, I think... Uh, two or three that he's still going between um and i still am trying to pick my uh commentator name so uh, <laughs> not yet i guess i'll i'll probably be unveiling it monday i guess uh i we, think it's probably better that it's a surprise because they're gonna be goofy and silly and oh yeah. they're gonna they've gotta be fucking wild names um yeah we don't don't want to pop you too soon with those yeah um, I do have the overlays and everything with that. We've got a theme song for NBA. Uh, yeah, Who we did are. That? I, we are very very excited for this. Um, so yeah, uh, that will be every single Monday from five to seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it's going to be a rotating cast. So we've got the first game is going to be a party of three. Which should be a lot of fun uh, because when you only have three players, I think combat, which this show is mostly going to be focused on combat. Um, gets really interesting because, well, I mean, shit, you guys are two players, so your combats are, uh, you know, get pretty, pretty rough. Um, but yeah, it's good uh, though. I like it because mm-hmm. you it's it's unbalanced, but that's how that's how that's how it is in real life. You know, you have you don't normally have like a full party, a full party of you know yeah. with 
various different skill sets. It's kind of interesting to be quite similar. So, sometimes you makes just have you tackle... two fucking cowboys, just cowboy and shit up. <laughs> yeah, man, you, it makes you it makes you tackle problems in a different way. So it's mm-hmm. it's cool. John, you want to talk about anything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk about everything that you brought with me. Um, yeah, obviously we've got uh, Half Party Heroes and One Shot Onslaught, our two main podcasts that have started uh, the Majestic Goose Network, and from there we have branched off to also including um roll for weird and dice talk like jerome do mentioned um we have also got obviously this one shitty cowboys and then um one thing we are trying to dr- grow this twitch channel so if you're not following us at twitch.tv slash one shot onslaught please do i have got why a... not yeah why aren't you yeah why yeah why not why aren't you just following stop us? stealing all this content this <laughs> brilliant content i've got a uh a pretty like us, please. goal of 500 followers by the end of 2020 so uh, i'm gonna need some help hitting that because that's a yeah that's make a big, adam happy it's a stretch goal but uh it would be very cool if we hit that um and other than that we are about to do a giveaway here in the next like 10 minutes uh so go over to at goose majestic on twitter and follow and retweet the pinned tweet there. Um, and I'll be picking the winner here at like 8 o'clock. So in about 20 minutes from now. And other than that, thank you all for listening and or watching. And we will see you in two weeks. Bye, everybody. See you on down trail. Love you.